Hey guys, welcome back to the Smith Zero YouTube channel. Today we are back on the Mark 1 TDI. I'm just gonna start going through all the wiring. So this harness I have here, you can see it's got the lighting harness and the fans, that kind of stuff. This was the uh, harness that had the melted wires up under the dash that we wanna fix. So I think the best course of action for this is basically I have the the Mark I Bible out here, the Bentley. And with the Bentley, I'll be able to go through, make sure every wire is what it needs to be. And anything that's extra, like that, like that, like that, like these, all that kind of stuff, anything that's extra is gonna be gone. I have some nice new razor blades, some cutters, a helper, uh, brake clean, rags, so I can clean all the wires as I go. The point of this is to just clean everything up, tidy it up, remove what we don't need, but uh, there was no horn, there was no horn wiring, and we gotta fix the melted stuff. You know, we just gotta, just gotta figure it out, basically. Put you guys all up on time lapse and just start tearing into it. I did finish basically this is the the main power harness that goes from the battery and it also houses all the lighting harness and most of the grounds in the chassis so I went through this stuff and there were just many 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 issues let me bring you down to a couple things so I want you guys to keep in mind that this was an AC truck so because of that it had a lot of extra wiring from the factory but a lot of this wiring was very very hacked up and then the rad fans and the rad fan switch wiring was so horrendous that i literally i just took it all out because what i plan to do is to make my own sub harness where it'll just run directly from the battery fused to the rad fan switch when the rad fan switch comes on it goes right to the fans it's the most simplistic way it eliminates the rest of the chassis out of it. And let me show you the main reasons why. So here's all the wiring that I took out of the car. And let me find you the fan wiring. This is your rad fan wiring. You follow it down, follow it down. There was literally nothing holding these wires together besides some twisties, some twisty boys, and electrical tape. Pretty much everything I found that was ever an issue with this truck is in the same exact condition. This is a wiring harness that comes directly from the AC box. This is the one that's melted. These connection points are something that someone has added in here. I don't understand why they added them in here, but they're in here. I cut them out as well. So guys, I've simplified this down. There were a bunch of pins in the back of these that go to the fuse box that uh, the clips were actually broken, so they wouldn't really hold in any anymore. So I did just put some epoxy behind it, so now the wires are staying there nice and tight. Hopefully I'll never have an issue with it. If I do, I'll know right where to go and uh, replace it if I have to. This plug goes to the 
the whole AC system box. And you can see there used to be six wires in here, technically seven because one was jumped. I've depinned all those wires and I took them out because we don't need AC. So this will strictly just be supplying power to the fan, stuff like that up under the dash. As you see, um, this kind of has a direct path to right here. This is my direct power to the fuse box. So I think what I'm gonna try to find to do, this one right here that goes directly up to the fan, I'm definitely gonna run an inline fuse to it. I'll try to do it so it's out of the way and not seen, but that'll have one. These two wires that go directly to the fuse box to power it on, I have to see if on the fuse box side, if it's fused. If it's fused going into the fuse box, I'll leave it alone. If it's not fused, then I will also add a fuse out here. Takes care of most of it. And then everything else is just basically retaped. I have the alternator wire here. All we need from the OEM harness is the alternator wire. How we're gonna have it wired is just like how Mark III would have it, where from directly from the battery, it goes down to the starter. And then from the starter, there's a wire that runs right over to the alternator. So that's how we'll have it ran. So to where it's just like a Mark III, takes a lot of things out of the equation. Uh, wiper motor, I did delete all of the wiper windshield washer pump wiring because I don't think we'll ever need it again. Down here at all these turn signal wires, they were all, it looks like these have been replaced and they were replaced again, same way those were replaced. They were just twist and taped and terrible. So I put some uh, good buck connectors on it with heat shrink and then I taped over it all with this Tessa tape so everything's nice and uniform and we shouldn't have any issues. And then um, we never had horn wiring so I did find that in the wiring harness and I put a little Deesh Works connector so now we can run this to our horn. That takes care of all of that. I might put it in right now, we'll see. Uh, what I'm gonna do is save all this stuff because a couple of them do have pins on them so I could potentially reuse some of it. But uh, right now we'll move all this stuff out of the way. Potentially put this in, we'll see. If I put this in the car, I'll bring you along. But what we, uh, the, the next plans are to start messing with the wiring harness from the Mark III. Now there's not many uh, wires we actually need. So what I'm gonna be doing is getting out the Mark III book and I'm just gonna be watching, uh, all, I'm gonna look through the ECU and just keep following along on the pages in the Bentley manual. And I'm gonna find switch 12 volts, solid 12 volts on the fuse box wiring. Let me try to show you guys. So if you can see this, 30 and 32, well it's 30-2, 30-1. These are constant power directly from the battery. 15 is a switched ignition source. 31 is ground. X is what turns off when you're turning the key on. All right, so that's what we gotta dive into next, figure out which wiring we need for the Mark III engine. And uh, see you guys in a little bit. Yeah. 